Hey, welcome back to another episode of Five Minute Computer Science. My name is Mr. K, and today we're going to be talking about hashing. So, what does a hash really look like? What I mean is taking an item of data and doing something with it, applying an algorithm, and then popping out a result. Now, you need to be familiar with various words in hashing, and one of those is called collisions. Collisions occur, so how do we resolve them? Here's an example of a collision. You, come here, come here. Collisions, boom, get out of here. That's not the kind of collision I'm talking about. All right, I'm sorry. But, you can tell you more. Well, all right, I've got to go. Five minutes on the clock. A hash is a result generated by applying an algorithm or numeric process to a given value. So what do I mean by this? Well, here's a given value. Say this was a hospital and it was a patient record number. The patient record number would be put through a algorithm, some kind of process, and it would then generate a result. So the result of this record being hashed gives you the number seven if you take this record number and hash it it produces the result of zero how it does it isn't important that's the whole point of a hash function because a hash functions are one way and cannot be reversed it's not possible to get a number number four here and then backward engineer it or backward find the answer seven five two zero three four two nine what actually happens in a hash is, is just simply that the value of a hash, this one here, is taken, put through the process, and it generates a zero, just like this number down here generates a nine. So let's have a look at how this actually works. Well, in this instance, for, the, for your understanding, the hash function that's been used is called mod or modulo. And we're going to be using the modulo 11 hashing function. And to give you an idea what that does is it takes the number here and it divides it by 11 and whatever the remainder is becomes the value that's outputted by the hash function. So that value there divided by 11 would give you a remainder of 7. This value divided by 11 would give you a remainder of 0. That's the hash function we're going to be applying. But of course it's impossible to find it backwards because there's lots of numbers that are divided by 11 that give you the result of four. So why is it important in computer science and how do we use it in computer science? Well, a couple of things for you to bear in mind, okay? A hash table is a type of data structure. So it's an array, but basically it allows you to very quickly search for a item in a large array rather than doing some kind of sequential search where you're going through each item at a time. So let's see in action and then all of this will make complete sense to you. So imagine a hospital has patient records with the following patient record numbers, okay? We will use the modulo 11 calculation to work out the hash value, which is over here. And I've already explained how modulus 11 works. All right, so let's have a look at an example. Here's a 2D array. We have the index values on the left-hand side and then the actual values where we want to put the um, records here. Now you'll notice that each slot is currently empty and it will eventually hold the record number of the patient in there but currently it's empty and where we place each record will be based on the hash value that's created. So let's see this in action. Adding to the hash table. Let's take this record number here and apply the modulus 11 hash. What it does is it produces the result of 7. So that number there, let's say, divided by 11 gives you the remainder of 7. And therefore, this record number is stored in index 7. Because the hash value was 7, it, the hash value 7 tells us that we need to store the value in index 7. And so you'll notice that this record has now been stored here. In the same way, this value here, going through modulus 11 produces the index of 0 or the hash value of 0 and therefore this value here 1003747 that one there is stored here. In the same way this particular record uh, after it's gone through the modulus 11 system produces a result of 9 and the 9 is over here and it's stored in slot number 9. So basically Whatever the result of the hash value is, it is used as the index to where the data is stored. Look, collisions do occur, and that's not a problem. 
collisions are good. The collisions tell you that your hash function is working properly. And of course, we need to just handle collisions. And we do that by using something called linear probe. And this is how a collision works. All right, so let's have a look at an example. You'll see here that we have two records that produce the same hash value. So this record here, going through modulus 11, might produce a four. And this record, stroke, record number here, through modulus 11, produces a four. Or indeed, you can have a look at the other example where it might produce the remainder of zero. Well, how do we actually fix this? Well, it's dead easy. Here's how. We use something called linear probing. So we apply the hashing algorithm, we examine the result, and we check to see if the index is free. If it's free, we store the value. If it's not, we move sequentially to the next free slot. So this record here produced, going through modulus 7, produced a value of zero. Well, we first go and look at index zero. Is index zero free? Well, no, it isn't. And therefore we move down the list until we find an empty slot. So we move down to one. Well, is that empty? No, we move down again. Well, that was empty. And so we put in there the record one, 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 two, 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 two. Okay. In the same way, we've got a record number here. We put it through modulus 11 and it produces the hash value of four. And so we go to index four. Well, index four is currently taken by something. And then we move down, we probe using a linear process until we find an empty slot. So there's the empty slot and therefore the number goes in there. That's all it is when it comes to handling collisions. Dead easy. So what are the benefits of hashing over other structures? Well, a hash table enables direct access. And what that means is if you need to find a value, you can normally put it through the modulus 11 system, find the index and then go straight to it. Imagine an array that has a million slots. Well, you don't want to probe each one one at a time until you find a record. It's far easier to hash the record, find the hash value and then go straight to the memory location where you think it might be stored. I'm going to leave you with this. Thank you for watching Farm and Computer Science.